Hello and welcome to the hands-on section. In this hands-on section, we're going to create an end-to-end file-to-file interface. This is basically your first interface hands-on lesson. In AEX, you will be developing lots and lots of interfaces. So treat this as your first interface from end to end. And I'm trying to keep this scenario mostly to a real-time scenario. Let's say you're working with a project, you know, and then you got this kind of requirement. So I'm going to walk you through all the detailed steps, you know, how to configure your interface, what are the namespace that you have to use, how to do a proper naming convention, what objects to be created and how to align it properly, how to draw the diagrams to note, to do a proper notation and to understand, you know, what protocol to be used, you know, and what are different parameters that basically applied in the overall integration steps. Okay. So first, let me explain you what is the scenario that you're trying to build. Okay. So you're trying to create a PO create scenario file transfer from customer to your company means customer is going to initiate a PO create transaction to your company and customer is going to initiate means customer might have an FTP server and your company also have an FTP server. So the job of your being an integration specialist is to pick the PO create file from this FTP server and then place it in your company's FTP server. So once the file has been placed here, maybe yeah, there's another application who reads the PO create you know, and start de developing those, you know, order that has been received by your company. But that doesn't matter to you. Though your job from an integration perspective is to connect to customer to its FTP location, pick the file if it's available convert it maybe to a different format and then send it over to the your company and I'm calling your company as PO casts right that's basically I'm giving a name to your company your customer I'm just giving as a customer name it could be Google HP IBM anyone and the protocol basically is the FTP protocol that we are using maybe a standard port of 21 so when you draw this kind of diagrams let's say you know always try to put your company on the left hand side represent everything that belongs to you and if you are working with your company then rep represent all the systems on the left hand side on the target you represent all the customer suppliers bank you know maybe a cloud system everything on the right hand side okay and then when you want to show the transaction that's happening from source to target you represent with an arrow notation right so even though your system is on the left hand side you say the message is initiated from customer to your company and that's why the arrow sh shows from customer to AEX and AEX to your company and always remember the, the arrow direction that has been used means where it is pointing it's pointing from customer to AEX means the message will come from customer to AEX and then if it's a two-way arrow then that might indicate that customer sends something to AES and AEX might respond back something to a customer. So be careful when you show what's the direction of your interface okay and typically you show a box that's basically in AEX is basically your integration server and uh, if you are using any other integration tool apart from AEX you can still use this kind of notation to see to show that the message is flown from customer to your company using the FTP protocol and the small little FT, FTP server icon server to show that you know there's a server sitting in the customer's location and we are picking the file from this one so let's go ahead and uh, create the interface in the AEX so let's create the file to file interface so we will go into SLD define product software component technical system and business system and then we'll assign our technical system to the software component so that you have an end-to-end -end view how to create from SLD to ESB then to integration builder okay so let's start with the SLD so I am in the PO or the AEX home page click on SLD okay let's create a product click on new create a new product and a version say next then I'm gonna give the product name as interface demo that's the vendor and version is 1.0 then I need to give in product instance that I will use to give in a lowercase now I'm creating a software component version I'll use the same name 
but you can use any name that you want and this is the name I will import in the ESP and uh, all the interface that I create will will use this particular software component okay and I click finish okay your product is created and software component is created so let's verify it So the software component is created and product is created let's define the technical system and business system go back to home click on technical system new technical system and then we'll define of type third party so that we can assign the install software click next i'll give the name ts underscore f to f to indicate file to file I'm defining a customer system with this notation so I'm saying this is a customer technical system and this naming generally you have to have a customer system and then your company system that is a PO cash system so I'll copy this maybe okay and then I say next then we'll assign our software component it's basically the product and the software component okay then you click finish once done we create one more for our company technical system select third party we use the same notation but here we say PO cast see I'm not using source and target because I because the source might become the target and the target becomes a source because depending on from where the message has been routed I'll just use the company names right and I'll say it's a system okay say next then assign your software component say finish so technical systems are created let's go ahead and create a business system new business system of type third party say next select our technical system ts f2f customer system i want to say f2f so I'll say C underscore F2F because there's a limited space there. Then I use the business system name. Okay, same name as TS is just that I changed T to B. Okay. Then this will pre populate from technical system. Say next. Select your PO system and say finish. So we'll create one more business system for your company. I use the same technical system name and instead of T I use B. And just say next and select your PO system so this business system we will import in the integration directory okay to verify go back to home go back to software component find your software component right and here you know there's a product assigned go to install system you see both the technical system so that's how you can verify the technical system has been assigned to your software component okay so let's go ahead and uh, open our ESB and then we will import the software component that's nothing but the interface demo so I am in the ESB now we have just created product software component technical system and business system 
right so now we will import the software component in the esp okay so you can go on to the listing area say new go to software component version under work areas click import from sld click on display now find your software component so we have created interface demo click and import and say create so we have we are importing a software component from sld make sure the objects are modifiable change it to english and then save once saved you can find your interface demo software component loaded in the esp okay so from here onwards we can start creating our objects here okay so i'm closing this let's create a namespace right click on the software component say new go to namespace so we are defining a file to file interface so i'll say namespace as file to file http pocast.com interface demo that's a software component name and file to file make sure your software component is selected here say create okay once create you can give name to it click save once it is saved you can find the namespace it's be created here okay so let's close the namespace now we create the objects under the namespace so let's create a data type right click and say new go to interface objects create data type click on data type so we will define a po create data type for customer okay so this is representing the structure of PO create that is sent by customer to us. So I can say okay, and then say create. So if you see cust C U S T cust, I'm using this F two F underscore cust as a notation to create objects for customer. I'll use F two F underscore PO cast as an objects notation to represent objects for POCast that's your company okay so let's create the structure here so follow through what I'm doing here and you can even replicate the same steps so I'll create a simple structure here so first I would like to create all the fields then I work with the type and the occurrence You, you see when I click enter it go back here you click back to the last entry and see insert element so I'm trying to define a PO create then I define the items so here I will create a sub element And here I create an element. Okay. Once the sub element is done, you can close it and then you can create an element to it. That's basically the on the same hierarchy. Now let's try defining the type. So PO number could be integer, date, we will give it a string, name, string, item, just leave it blank because that's a node. Item number, I give it integer, name, string, quantity, integer, price, integer, amount, I'll use integer. Okay. 
and I'll change the occurrence to 0 to 1. So no, none of the fields are basically mandatory and I save this. So once saved, right, you have your data type, you can close this and then we will create from this structure itself and we will add some additional fields to it. Okay. So you can right click on it and say copy object to create a copy of it. And this time I will say cast as PO cast. To represent I'm creating a structure for PO cast right, that basically your company okay and then you click copy and make sure your namespace and software component is same so that it comes and falls in the same software component and the namespace to change you can go to edit mode okay. then I will add two more fields to it click where you want to add I'll say creation date the PO date could be you know date that customer has raised it but creation date is a date when PI or AEX process it create one more element that is fulfilled by so by default we will assign some constant to it right so it's always fulfilled by PO cast okay. this one string string so we do some custom mapping here that's the reason I'm creating some additional fields okay now save it The structure is created close this one now we'll create the message types right click on your namespace say new interface objects click on message type we will use same notation f2f cust we use dt now use empty create for cust we will drop the customers po create structure the name and you see the black box here indicating that you know you can drop the structure here and then it will load the data data type structure in the message type with the same namespace let's close this let me create another message type This time I use PO cast and I'll use the PO cast data type. Okay, and then save it. Okay, so message types are created. Now we'll create inbound and outbound interface. The outbound basically representing the customer service interface so we'll say si out f2f customer because outbound is incoming so a customer po create and once it is created make sure it's outbound stateless asynchronous and this name and this name is same use the customers message type okay drag and drop then you can save Once 
once done right click on service interface in new this time I create service interface of type inbound POCAST change the category to inbound and then you drag and drop the message type of POCAST Now we create a message mapping. You can use MM, same F2F, CUST, PO, to PO, CAST, PO. Okay. Please concentrate what naming convention I'm trying to use. So at least you know how to define a proper name to your interfaces, message type, data type, you know, operation mapping or message mapping. So now we will drop our message types here. So we do a mapping from customer to PO cast source and a target. You can you can see that the structures are not same. So let me try to do a mass mapping basically all the same field mapping. So click on the headers, click on map selection selected fields and then apply. So whatever field names are same that will be mapped. So if you see the creation date and fulfilled is not been matched. So that will not be mapped and you know from the color coding if it's gray, it's not been mapped. Okay. So creation date, we will use some date format. Okay, YYMMDD. Fulfilled by, we'll use a constant. use some text we'll map it okay and then we'll save this map we will test this once right so number is integer so I'll say one two three four five six seven eight nine some date Item number one, item name say iPhone, quantity five, and price of each amount, each iPhone, let's say is thousand, right? And total amount is five thousand, right? And let's click execute. So, apart from these values, we should see some additional field values basically the creation by creation date and fulfill by right the creation date is the current date the date when this PO has been created by the AEX this basically populates runtime and fulfill by we match some constant so that will be passed over and rest of the fields is one to one mapping okay so this is done so we close this let's create an operation mapping Operation mapping, we use the same MM. Instead of MM, you use OM. Same name. Click Create. Then we drag and drop the interface, the outbound on the left hand side, inbound on the right hand side. Once you add the interface, click this Read Operation button. Right. Make sure it is message mapping. You can do two things. You can drag and drop your mapping but typically you need to use this the reason is if all the configuration that you have done correct then it should load the correct mapping if it's not loading the correct mapping there's something wrong with your message mapping means you might have used a different structure that's not available in the interface okay so make sure you click this button and if it's showing you the right inter right message mapping then you have done the configuration correctly you click apply save this if you want you can even test it from here okay so let's review our object so I'm 
showing only the display selected subtree we don't have any imported objects okay so we have created two data types one to represent customer one to represent our company we have created two message type out of the two data type then we have created two service interface one to represent outbound customer and inbound as PO cast then we created a message mapping between customer to PO cast structures that's basically two empty cast and PO cast then we have created an operation mapping based on the two service interface and use the message mapping inside it okay and then we have imported this from the SLD and then we have created a namespace okay so remember this interface right so once we import the business system in the integration directory this interface will be automatically loaded because the reason is we have attached this software component to the business system so once you import the business system in the id this interface will al already be visible there just because we have mapped the software component in the sld with the business system okay so let's activate this go to change list see all your objects click activate done click close delete it the next step is you need to verify the runtime cache okay everything is green now go to your design objects and you should see your objects all active mode okay so now let's create the configuration integrated configuration in the integration directory i'm in the integration builder now so let's create our integrated configuration so this time i will use folders okay so right click say new go to folders create a folder okay i'll use the same software component name so that we can match up between the folder and the software component easily click create safe okay so if you have following through my courses do you know why the folder is not visible here any guess well that's a view you have to change your view to folder okay now it's visible so I'll click on this I'll show only this folder okay and anyway there's no objects in it that's why it's not showing it up here so let's change back the view and then create the folder here okay let's right click on the folder say folder you don't have to say new say folder create folder and we will say we are defining file to file because that's basically a representation of your namespace and here folder name don't use namespace just use you know like folders that you use on your laptop but try not to give big names Okay, always in PI try to use a shorter names and easy to understand right once you're here you can now only look at file to file folder now you can start creating the objects so first create the party so first create the customer party right to represent customer and then make sure the folder is file to file Okay, you can leave it blank, say yes, save, create one more for party, that's basically your PO cast co company and if you notice I'm not using source sender, source tender, target and you know, all those things because these are not source and target, these are companies that you're defining so you don't have to say source and the target. For learning purposes I want to show you where is the source, where is the target but here when you do real-time scenarios there is no source and target the source and target could change any time depending on from there where the message is coming and going to so here you actually define the companies itself might be you say global or intra global or you know site specific location let's say Singapore global you know or maybe you say Singapore local something like that but just I'm representing a party with a company name you don't have to say F2F I'm just trying to give you a notation F2F so that when I created when I create HTTP to SOAP I'll so I'll say H2S 
you know it's easy for us to refer but in real time you don't really use f2f right click create save okay now we'll create a business system so business system we will import from sld okay so you can go to tools assign business system and then import it from sld tools so before that i told you we need to clear the sld cache then you try to go and assign it so that the cache will be refreshed from the sld and then it will not appear to which party we want to use cluster cust global customer bs f2f cust system then you have to say which folder file to file okay remember all these steps because if you just forget this click finish then you have to really find that for object so you say right party and then right business system and right folder name then click finish then you should see the object here created it. it's visible here same step to create the uh, PO cast business system okay and one thing to see here is once you import right you need to make sure you you know which scenario and a folder that you're basically adding up if you miss this selection there's then you have to figure out the object right click on the object and say add to folder or add to scenario okay i'm going to show you that later view cast file to file finish so it will be visible here okay so both the business systems are visible and if you open this up the interfaces should be loaded properly you see the inbound interface is loaded properly here when you go to PO cast the sender interface is loaded properly okay this because you have added the software component to this business system so you don't have to manually add it so let's create a sender channel right click on the folder say new go to communication channel here you have to select your party okay so we will create for customer select your business component and i'll use a sender channel right and type of ftp this is a wrapper type and then we will use f2f cust or as a notation and make sure your folder is visible here click create select the file protocol make sure this is sender change to ftp so as of now i'll use some dummy values but i'm going to show you how to add this data from by showing you a real time ftp server okay to processing make this delete the processing mode means once the file has been picked up delete the file the polling interval is 60 seconds and then status is active save this next we'll create a receiver interface same procedure right click new communication channel select your party select the business system same ftp protocol file to file po cast and then receiver so file has been sent to po cast receiver using this channel select the protocol change the adapter type to receiver select ftp do some dummy values now
Okay, the style remains the same. Make sure it's active. Save this. Okay, so we have created our channels. Both the channels are created. Business systems are imported. Party is created. So let's create our integration configuration. Right click say new. Say integrated configuration is also called as ICO. Okay. So next time when I say ICO, it's basically integrated configuration. So let's select the party. So if the, the message is going to come from customer to PO cast. Okay. So that's what we're going to show here. The interface will automatically populate the outbound interface. Right out presenting outbound. Make sure the folder is file to file. Say create. So we'll work with this ICO. Now you need to attach your sender channel. So if you have done the steps correctly by assigning the right business system and the party, you don't really have to do anything here because once you click help automatically it will open up the corresponding object based on the party and the component okay and if it's not visible here let's say you click help and nothing is visible means some of the configuration is wrong okay you haven't attached the right party or the business component and that's why the channel is not visible here right so we attach the sender ftp channel from where the file has been picked and where you want to send you want to send to PO cast okay then what is the operation mapping first you select your inbound interface then you select your operation mapping so all this you see is automatically populating and then you don't have to really search for it it's just because you have done the right mapping between your software component your namespace and you know all those in and out notations that's why it's able to identify properly your interface okay then outbound processing is your receiver channel that you have just created okay so once this is done just save this and then we are done with our interface configuration okay so we have created two party, two business system, two channel sender and receiver and one ICO scenario. Now let's activate this one. Go to change list. Just activate. Then let's verify. Go to objects. Display all the trees. Then you can see your interface. Okay. And then you can see all your objects here so as and when we proceed in the course i'll try to create different scenarios here like http to soap file to soap jdbc to file you know, those kind of things and we'll use this interface demo as our base um, interface holder you know and then software component wherein all the namespace that we create in esr will match up with the folder here in the integration builder Okay, so the configuration is done. Let me show you the FTP server and then we'll configure the channels. Okay, so now let me run through how do you connect to an FTP server. So this software that you're seeing here is called as FileZilla. This is an FTP client and I already have an remote site. Basically, it's an FTP server site and I've connected to that site and I've created a folder called interface demo. And in that folder, I've created the same folder structure that I have used in the integration builder, let's say interface demo has a file to file. I use the same file to file folder and in the folder I have two channels. Let me show you the channels CC, FTP, F2F, CUST and POCAST. I have used the same notation to create two folders. So I can place the file in this folder and the channel path I will set to this folder location. And once the processing is done, it will place the file in the receiver folder. And in the in the channel, I'll use this, this path to place the file. On the left hand side is basically my local system, C colon POCAST folder, right? 
and uh, once the files is available in the FTP location I can download it to my local machine to verify whether the file transfer and the conversion is done properly or not okay so we'll use this FTP location I'll show you how to configure it and uh, and how to use it with your PO machine so let me show you how to configure an FTP sender so let's say I have an remote FTP location and I have a path where I can place the file and I want the channel the sender channel to pick the file from this location okay so I'll copy this path I go to my integration builder and then I'll open the channel okay go to edit mode so there's a source directory I want the directory to be the FTP location then I have to enter the server so my server is at this IP okay and I have a user ID and password processing I'll use it as 60 second but I will try to stop this channel once the processing has been done I want to delete the file once the process is when the file is being picked up and the file that need to be available is this name but I will say asterisk means any file that I drop here okay this sender channel should pick the file from this location I click save Okay. then I have a target receiver folder and once the file is been picked up and processed by the ICO I want the file to come into this location so I go open up the receiver channel go to edit mode now I say the target directory is here don't create a directory it's I've already created it then the file name is XI output I can say f to f scenario dot that right and then so I'll add the server IP and I'll give the credentials And I'll add the timestamp to see when the file has been created. And uh, I will still write the empty file. Okay, I'll save this. So how how we have configured sender and receiver? You need to have an FTP server if you're dealing with FTP protocol. If you don't have that, if you have access to the AEX server, then you can use the NFS option. Okay. So once both the channel is active, you need to start debugging it. But we'll activate this first, then we'll start debugging whether the file has been picked up or not. So before that, we don't have a file. So let's create a file. So for that, we can go to ESB, go open our message mapping, go to test tab. And if you remember, you know, we can create the data from test tab itself. So I will use some dummy data here. To get the data, go to source. You can copy paste this one. Go to that folder location. Go to file to file. And then this is in my PC, right? So I will transfer this file to this FTP. So I will create a file. I 
I'll paste the data here. Okay. Save. Okay. Now we have to transfer this file to the FTP location so that the file will be picked up from our sender channel. So I will minimize the folder, minimize the ESB. We will verify or monitor our channel first. Before transferring, we will see what's happening with our channel. So copy this channel. I'll show you how to monitor this channel. I'm in the PO homepage again. This time I go to PI Mon. I go to adapter engine, go to communication channel monitor. You can find your channel now. Enter the channel name, say go. So we have some error, right? We had error because initially we give dummy dummy. So that's the time maybe it's trying to use a dummy and then trying to make a call and it will definitely fail. Okay. So now there's no file. That's why it's not picking up the file. So let's drop the file okay let's drop this file in the sender location because this is a sender we have configured in the sender channel let me show you that so in the sender channel we say this is the path you can pick the file from this path the sender channel okay and then this sender folder i will transfer the file okay the file has been transferred here. Now we will verify our PI system. Okay, the processing is started. It picked the file. Okay, so now the file has been picked up and it's successful. You can click the message ID to see further what happened with your message okay you can say this you see the status is delivered just click on it further you can see what's the log okay but let's go to our ftp folder and see what happened with the folder so in the receiver the file has been created and if you look at the name that we have used xi output f2p scenario there's some file created so let's verify this file let's download this file Okay, and then let's open notepad. Okay. So the file is same. It's not formatted well. So let's format this first. And you should see some additional data because that's what we have done in the mapping. That's basically the creation date and fulfilled by coming up from our mapping program. Okay, looks pretty much we have done our first interface by placing the file in the FTP location and P has processed it successfully and it has delivered to our FTP location. And if you look at the file, the file will be deleted. Okay, because we use delete in our channel. And let's say you want to stop this channel. You don't want further processing. You don't want it to pick it again. You know, keep searching. Just open up the file and say stop here. Okay. So the channel is stopped. It won't pull to this FTP location. Even then, now if you place the file, it won't pick it up from here. Okay. So you have successfully done a file to file scenario by picking up file from one location from one FTP server. No, and then in the same FTP location, we have used as a different folder to drop the file. So if you, if you have a PO cast and a customer FTP location, IP address and the user ID and the password, then you can change it in the channel itself. It will connect to that FTP server and drop the file. Okay.